Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon and recently I went through and did the Pen 300 course from Offensive Security, otherwise known as their Evasion Techniques and Breaching Defenses course. This course was awesome and completing it results in the OSEP certification, which is the Offensive Security Experience Penetration Tester, and you'll get a cool certification that looks like this. Now, I'm not too sure if they're still doing the paper certifications, which is kind of a shame, but nonetheless, I think the course was a great learning opportunity and it was the most challenging certification course I have ever done. So I figured I'd make this review video and let's talk about it a bit. So let's start out with talking about what this certification even entails and who it's for. Well, this is meant to be a continuation of the OSCP certification. So typically what happens is people who are interested in getting a pen testing job are going to start with getting their OSCP and then, you know, go get their first pen testing job. But most people then realize that, well, the knowledge gained just from OSCP isn't enough to actually do a lot of things on real environments because you're dealing with antivirus or different, uh, you know, different controls in place that make hacking into systems a lot harder. So really the OSCP is just like getting your feet in the water of pen testing. It's really a lot of the basics that you need to, to build upon, a lot of the fundamentals, right? But OSEP takes that up a notch, and after completing that course, you're going to be learning things like antivirus evasion, writing custom implants with interpreter shellcode that will get by antivirus systems, uh, app locker bypasses, PowerShell constrained language mode bypasses, and how to find those for yourself, using binaries that come native on the system to live off the land, uh, attacking SQL servers in really complex ways in Active Directory environments, and so much more. I'll actually leave a link to the full syllabus for OSEP down below. There's way too much for me to talk about, but there is a lot of information in that course, and it's great for people who are looking to step up their pen testing game after OSCP. One of the things that I thought was very cool about OSEP was, as opposed to OSCP, where you're just searching online for a lot of exploits and running them, OSEP emphasizes writing your own tooling and writing your own payloads. That is what the course is about. So while you may be exploiting uh, a well-known misconfiguration or something like that in an Active Directory environment or whatever it may be, you are going to be writing your own tooling throughout the course and using that tooling and customizing and tweaking that tooling in the challenge labs. And the same goes for payloads. They focus heavily on crafting a variety of payloads and you're gonna be writing all sorts of things in C-sharp different things like DLL injection or just regular shell code runners in different languages, all with the interpreter shell code. And I thought that was awesome. And by the end of it, you're gonna be able to evade antivirus systems, no problem. I had no issues, and I still have no issues getting around things like Windows Defender antivirus uh, based on the material I learned with OSEP, which is awesome because I, I struggled with that before, but between you know all the Signature based evasion or heuristic evasions, they teach you uh, for antivirus as well as AMZ bypasses and things like that. It makes getting around AV systems almost a breeze. It's not an issue anymore, which is awesome. But there is one caveat to that. If you're into red teaming and you're up against EDR systems, this course will not prepare you to get around those. It is a good fundamental, you know, that you can kind of build off of this AV evasion and then learn some more techniques to maybe get around EDR. But EDR is a separate beast, and unfortunately, I did not find that OSEP prepared me to get around EDR systems. So there's your advisory on that. So when you're going into OSEP, if you're looking to take the course, there's a few things I would recommend knowing beforehand. First of all, OSEP recommends that you already have your OSCP, which I don't think is a firm requirement. I don't know if they actually require you to have it, but you certainly need the knowledge learned in that certification to even start learning uh, the stuff with OSEP. So I would recommend having your OSCP before starting OSEP, right? The other thing is you should have a basic understanding of programming in C Sharp. A lot of the course material in OSEP is written in C Sharp. There's some other things like JScript and PowerShell, but predominantly it's all in C Sharp. So if you have never written a line of C Sharp before, they do give you a lot of the code examples, but you would be doing yourself a disservice to enter this course without having a general understanding of working with C-sharp. Now, they do teach you how to integrate with a lot of Win32 APIs, which is something that I hadn't done much of before this course. It was all very new to me. And I thought they did a great job with introducing how to integrate with those APIs on a Windows environment. So I don't think you need to go into this course with too much of an understanding of that beforehand, but definitely have some basic 
C-sharp knowledge. The other thing that you should definitely have a good grasp on is some of the basics and maybe even intermediary stuff of Active Directory environments. Now, before taking OSEP, I already had my OSCP and I took CRTP, which is the Certified Red Team Professional from Pentaster Academy. The knowledge I gained with CRTP really did help me with OSEP. I don't think it would be a requirement to take that certification before OSEP, but if it's something you're looking to get, I would definitely recommend taking it first because having that Active Directory knowledge and already having uh, a fundamental understanding of uh, Microsoft SQL servers in an Active Directory environment really did help me going forward with OSEP. So those are the things I would recommend knowing before even thinking of buying this course. So when you do buy the course, it is a pretty steep price tag, but I do think that the material that you are given is worth it. You're going to be given a large PDF book, similar to OSCP if you're taking something like that. I don't know exactly how long it is, uh, probably like 800 pages or something like that, uh, full of material. And again, that's going to be outlined completely in the syllabus, so you know what you're going to be learning ahead of time. It's not blind, right? So... There's a lot of material in that book. And then they also give you videos which go over all of the material that is covered in that PDF book as well. Personally, I just watched all the videos. I use the PDF more of like a reference guide. I am not someone who can sit down and just read a book for hours and hours upon end. So the videos are great for me. The content between the PDF and the videos overlaps almost completely, although there are some nuances and subtle differences between the PDF and book. So if you're going to do one or the other, make sure you at least check the other learning material out because they might leave out some details and things that you do want to know but would have missed if you didn't look at the book or look at the videos. You're also going to be given access to their lab environment. Now, I got the 90-day lab package and I use like every day of that lab package. I would certainly recommend getting the 90 days for OSEP because the amount of material covered is just immense. There's so much to learn in there. And if you're like me and a lot of the stuff in the syllabus look new, definitely get the 90 days. That is the way to go. Now, the challenge labs they give you access to are really cool. And I thought they were really well thought out and really well built. And I had a blast hacking through them. They give you access to six challenge labs. And these labs are going along exactly with the course material that you are learning. But it's not like the OSCP labs where a lot of those like one-off systems, you hack into a system, you get root and you're done, right? No, these challenge labs are like a small corporate environment with multiple machines that you have to get a foothold into that environment and then work through pivoting throughout the entire environment with multiple machines and a very well thought out scenario. I thought so. So I really enjoy the challenge labs. They varied in difficulty and uh, some of them were very challenging, but I think they did adequately prepare you for the exam. So if you can get through the challenge labs with OSEP, I think it does prepare you very well for the exams on top of the material that you learned. As far as the challenge labs go, when you get stuck, of course, there are the offensive security forums, which you can go on, which you'd be familiar with if you did OSCP. But honestly, I found that the most lively community was found in the offensive security discord server. I had not been a member of it before signing up for OSEP, but when I did, I realized there's such a lively community over there. And once you sign up for that course, you gain access to their pen 300 channels. And there are so many people talking in there and willing to help you out. So whenever I got stuck in the labs uh, and I was, you know, really needed a hint or I, maybe I thought something was broken in the labs and just wanted a, a sanity check from somebody, I could go over into the discord and people were extremely responsive. Whether it was the student admins or just fellow students who were taking the course, there was always somebody willing to help me out and uh, help me troubleshoot an issue I was having or work on a payload I was stuck crafting. So that was great. If you were going to sign up for the course, definitely join that Discord server. Plus, you're going to get all the announcements with things changing of the course. I know historically, I think roughly a year ago, there was a big leak of the exam environment, which is, you know, very upsetting. Uh, but, you know, th if those kind of things happen, you get the alerts right through the Discord server and you get them immediately. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Now, moving on to the exam, right? The OSEP exam is an absolute beast. It is extremely challenging. It is a 48-hour technical exam. So block off a weekend or something because you have 48 hours to take the exam and then another 24 to write the report. So really it's 72 hours and it is challenging. It is very difficult. I actually failed my first attempt at OSEP. So that was my first time failing a certification, right? But it's okay. It happens to all of us, right? Failure is a part of learning. Um, so yes, I did fail my first attempt at it. I got about 80 points. And in order to pass the exam, you need a 
there's actually two ways, right? You either need 100 points or they specify a specific target and you have to compromise that target. So it's very cool. Uh, the exam environment, without giving too much away, they simulate a large corporate network and there are multiple paths to the same point in the network. And essentially you need to, uh, there's multiple different paths and you need to choose one or multiple and exploit them to get to the end target. Very cool. I thought the exam environment was very well made and it was a great reflection of the course material for the most part. There were, there was namely one thing that was in the exam that was not taught in the coursework and I don't want to talk specifics about it, right? Um, but I will say there was one thing that was a real gotcha for me at least. Um, and even looking back after I failed the exam, I couldn't find any reference to this specific thing in the course material. And I was pretty upset about that because I lost a lot of time on that specific thing. And I did not appreciate that curveball. But besides that one curveball, everything else was covered in the course extensively. So if you prepared for the exam, then you should have no problem with it after doing all the challenge labs and things like that. Now, I will say before starting the exam, there are some, some real prep work you need to do. For all the code they give you examples of throughout the course, whether it's you know the PDF or the book or things you had to write for the challenge labs, you need to have all that stuff ready to compile and ready to go. The key to passing the OSEP exam is having your implants ready, having your exploit code ready so that you can just modify it and be ready to deploy that in the exam. The last thing you want to do is go into the exam and have to rewrite all your payloads or rewrite everything else because you're not going to have enough time to do that. The, the exam environment is large. It really is large. And uh, you, you don't want to be crafting your payloads or having to tweak all that stuff from scratch uh, during that time because it is challenging. And you'll likely need a lot of time to get through that exam. Well, if you're like me, the second time I passed it and it was no problem, but that first time the, the few gotchas really, really did hang me up there. Overall, I would say the OSEP course was a solid nine out of 10. I'm only docking one point because of that one thing I'm a little salty about on the exam. But other than that, I seriously would recommend people pursuing and taking this course and exam. I thought it was a, overall a great experience and I learned a lot of really valuable stuff. And I mean, these were things I learned that I could directly apply to my job as a pen tester at the time and uh, techniques that I still use, you know, or that at least gave me a solid fundamental that I knew what I was looking at and, and felt confident enough to start researching some more of that stuff on my own and building out some more tactics based on those things. So that's about all I have to say for OSEP. I hope you enjoyed this review video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. If you have any more questions that you'd like answered about the course, please feel free to leave them in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.